Hello students, we are happy to have you join us on this exciting journey into the world of computers with binary brains, the language of computers. Grade 8, Lesson 1 Today we are going to explore about computer networks. We are going to learn about networks revision, how networks work, communication in networks, network topology, Types of network topologies. Let's begin a quick revision of what we already know about networks. Networks connect devices allowing them to share files, communicate and access resources. Networks play a key role in our daily life, enabling various tasks from sending emails, playing online games and so much more. You may recall different types of networks like Personal Area Network PAN, Local Area Network MAN, Metropolitan Area Network MAN, Wide Area Network WAN. These networks enhance productivity, collaboration and entertainment through fast, secure and global connections. Students, now let's understand how networks actually work. To truly understand how networks work, it's important to first learn about the six key components that make a network work. They are nodes, devices, network interface card, NIC, cables and connectors, switches, routers, protocols and server. Let's look at each one of them. Nodes Devices A node is any device that can send or receive information on a network. Think of each node as a person in a big neighborhood. Just like the person can talk to each other, these devices communicate with each other over the network. Example, laptop, smartphone, printer, etc. Network Interface Card NIC A network interface card is a hardware component inside the device that enables the device to connect to a network either through Wi-Fi or a cable. Just as you need a phone number to make a call or an address to send a package, a device needs a NIC to connect to the network. Example, a laptop's built-in Wi-Fi or Ethernet port. Cables and connectors. Cables like Ethernet cables are used to connect devices in a wired network. Connectors are the plugs that connect these cables to the devices. Think of cables as roads that connect different houses in a neighborhood. Just like cars travel on road to get from one house to another, Data travels through cables to move from one device to another. Example, the Ethernet cable connecting the computer to the router. Switches and routers. Switches connect multiple devices within the same network, ensuring data is sent to the right place. Routers connect different networks together, managing data traffic between them. Imagine the switch is like a school office sending notes to classrooms and a router is a post office sending mails to different schools and places in the neighborhoods. Example, a switch in school connects classroom computers within the same network and a router at school connects the computer to the internet. Protocols Protocols are rules and languages that the device uses to communicate. They define how data is sent and received over a network. The most common protocol is TCP or IP, Transmission Control Protocol or Internet Protocol. Just like you need to speak the same language to understand with each other, devices need to use the same protocol to communicate. Example, when you type a website address, your computer uses the H HTTP, that is Hypertext Transfer Protocol, to request the web page from the server. Server. 
A server is a powerful computer that stores, processes, and manages data providing services to the other devices, that is clients, on the network. Think of it as a library. Students, as clients, request books, that is data, and the library, that is server, provides them. Example, when a web server delivers web pages, when you enter a URL, and a file server stores shared documents in an office. Now let's learn about communications in network. To understand communication in networks, let's break it down into two simple parts. Data packets and IP addresses. Data packets. When you send information over the internet or a network, it doesn't go all at once. Instead, it breaks down into smaller pieces called data packets. How does it work in network? In a network, when you send a message or a file, the message gets split into data packets. Each packet travels separately over the network. Each packet may take different route to the destination. Once all the packets arrive, the receiving device puts them all back together and shows the original message or a file. Students, did you ever think why does the network use data packets to transfer the information? Let's know why. Efficiency. Breaking data into smaller packets allows faster transmission and prevents network congestion. It makes the network operate smoothly. Reliability. If one packet is lost or encounters an issue, only that packet is recent, not the whole message. This minimizes the need for retransmission and ensures accurate and effective communication. IP address An IP address is a unique address for every device on the network, like an address for your computer, phone, or even a website. It helps you identify where the data packets should be sent. Every device on the network has an IP address like a specific home address, which ensures that the data reaches the correct device. Even websites have IP addresses. When you visit websites like google.com, your computer uses Google's IP address to connect to it. Example, this is what an IP address might look like. You usually don't see this because your computer translates this website name into a numerical address behind the scenes. Why is IP addresses important? IP addresses ensure that data packets reach the right destination. Each device on the network has a unique IP address which acts as an identity allowing the information to be sent and received precisely. Without them, the network wouldn't know where to send messages or files, causing confusion and errors. IP addresses are crucial for effective and reliable communication across networks. Let's learn about network topologies. Imagine a map of neighborhood, where each house represents a device. And the road between them are like the network cables. This is what a network topology is all about. The layout of how devices in the network are connected. In simple terms, network topology is the arrangement of devices in the network where they are connected directly to one another through a central device or in some other pattern. It's like the blueprint of your network. Now let's explore different types of network topologies. Bus topology. Bus topology is a way to connect multiple devices in the network using a single central cable. Imagine a single road with several bus stops. Each bus stop represents a device. In bus topology, all devices are connected to one main cable called the backbone or bus. When the device wants to send information, it puts all the data on the central cable and the data travels along the cable to all the other devices on the network. 
All the devices connected to this cable can listen to the message but the only intended recipient will pick it up and respond. Advantages It is simple to set up and requires less cable. Disadvantages If the main cable breaks, the whole network goes down. It can only handle a limited number of devices. If it becomes crowded, it becomes slow. Star topology Star topology is a way to connect all the devices in the network where every device has its own separate connection to a central device such as a hub or a switch. Imagine a bicycle wheel. At the center of the wheel, you have the hub. And from this hub, there are multiple strokes extending towards the rim. In the star topology, the hub is at the center and each device is connected to its own separate line. Advantages It is easy to troubleshoot, that is, if one device has a problem, it doesn't affect the rest. It is simple to add or remove devices in star topology. Disadvantages It requires more cables. If the central hub fails, all devices lose network. It is expensive to set up and requires high maintenance efforts and cost. Ring topology Ring topology is a type of network layout where all the devices are connected in a circular shape. Imagine a circle of friends holding hands. Each person can hold hand with the person on their left and right. Similarly, in the ring topology, each device is connected to one or two, one on each side. Data travels in one direction. The data moves from one device to the next in circle until it reaches the intended one. Advantages There is equal access for all the devices and less chance of data collisions. Disadvantages a break in the ring disrupts the whole network. It slows down as more devices are added. Mesh Topology In mesh topology, every device is connected to every other device in the network, creating multiple paths for the data to travel. Imagine a classroom where every student is connected to every other student by a string. If one student wants to pass a message to another, they can use any number of strings to do so. Similarly, in a mesh topology, data can travel directly between devices or use different paths. Advantages There are multiple paths for data, making the network highly dependable. There is no single point of failure, so if one connection breaks, data can take alternative route. Disadvantages It is expensive to set up due to large number of cables and connections required. Tree Topology In tree topology, devices are arranged in hierarchical tree-like structure. Imagine a tree with a trunk, branches and leaves. The main trunk of the tree represents the central network called the root node or root device which is usually a powerful computer or a server that connects the network, while the branches represent different parts of the network called intermediate nodes connecting the end devices that is leaves, which are computers, printers, etc. that use the network. Advantages It is scalable and well organized. Disadvantages if the root device fails, the whole network is affected. This topology can be more complex to manage. That's all for today, students. Hope you had fun learning about computer networks. Want to test your brain? You can attend a quiz of this chapter on Dattamsh website. Once you finish attending the quiz of all the chapters, you will receive a certificate. Scan the first QR code to visit Dattamsh website or click on the link provided in the description box. Scan the second QR code to learn how to navigate to assessment page and access the quiz section on the website. 
or click on the link provided in the description box. You can also download this PPT from the Thumbs website. Great job little genius, you have finished lesson 1. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next lesson. Happy learning!